to how do we approach the patient with rheumatoid arthritis? Well, the first thing that occurs is they go on anti-inflammatory meds. This is generally initiated by the primary care doctor or the patient. They take drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen to try to relieve their pain and swelling, but that's not sufficient. Uh, once the patient gets to the rheumatologist and we can confirm the diagnosis of joint swelling and, and involvement of the joints and they make a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, which is a clinical diagnosis, it's not based on a lab test, we will generally start those patients on a group of drugs called disease-modifying therapy. And the most popular drug we use is methotrexate, which is one that we helped develop uh, 30 years ago. Uh, methotrexate works in about 60% of patients, it induces a low disease activity or remission state in about a third of patients. And if patients are not getting achievable low disease activity or remission, we add other drugs on top of it. Generally, the biological therapies, initially drugs that block tumor necrosis factor, a tenercept and adalidomat, sertilizumat and infliximat are common drugs that we use. They've been around for 20 years, they're not new anymore. And then if they don't respond on those drugs, we have a host of other molecules, many of them we, that we were part of the development program here at the Brigham Women's Hospital. But many patients with rheumatoid arthritis are gonna require long-term management of the disease. I would tell you nowadays, if a patient walks in with new onset rheumatoid arthritis, there's every reason to expect that they're gonna be able to maintain all the things they wanna do functionally that, could do, that they could do before they got the disease. That's not something we could tell a patient 15 years ago. So there's great hope for patients with this disease. So what happens in our patient in which the drug therapies don't work? And about 10% of our patients still have high disease activity despite going through multiple treatment options. They're the patients that are going for joint replacement surgery. The number of patients that have needed replacement of their knuckles, for instance, significantly less than we saw 15 years ago. The number of patients that need hip or knee replacement, significantly less. We're integrated completely with orthopedic surgery. We have a common center, the uh, Orthopedic and Arthritis Center at the Brigham Women's where we work directly with our orthopedic surgeons. Our facility is set up with rheumatologists, orthopedic surgeons, physiatry, occupational and physical therapy, and bone radiology. So it's really one-stop shopping. The patient comes in, can see the rheumatologist. We can refer them across the hall to see the orthopedic surgeon. They can get their x-rays done. They could see physical therapy, occupational therapy, physiatry, etc. So it's a, it's a very easy facility for patients to get integrated rheumatology and orthopedic care. And when I see a patient with new onset rheumatoid arthritis, I'm quite confident that we can stop their disease and allow them to perform their normal functional activities. I see patients that are professional athletes with rheumatoid arthritis, triathletes that continue to participate, patients who are involved in physical labor that can do their jobs. So there's no reason to expect if you have this disease with new onset disease that we can't stop it and allow them to do all the things they want to do in their life.